Hi, welcome to Exploring the Illusion of Free Will. My name is George Ortega, and today we're going to be talking about how the free will belief encourages the most hateful belief possible, and that's the belief in hell. <laughs> okay, so it's going to be a fun show. Um, so let's, before I get into that, um, as I do every show, and just want to go why, get into why I'm doing the show. Um, this belief in free will is extremely destructive, as, as this show will explain. Um, it pits us against each other, you know, wrongly. You know, it, it has us blame each other and ourselves for what we had absolutely no choice but to do. Okay, and, and so the idea is like to the extent that as a world we can overcome this collective delusion, um, we can create a, a blame-free world, an arrogance-free world, a guilt-free world, an envy-free world, a world where everybody cooperates rather than like, you know, is pitted against each other. Um, okay, and, and the basic, you know, when I say free will, you know, what, what generally is meant by... Um, by the term free will is that we're responsible for what we do. I mean, like, one definition is that what we do is up to us with nothing that is not in our control um, compelling us. And naturally, you know, you can see if our unconscious is not in our control and it's taking part in decisions, then obviously um, the decisions can't be completely up to us. But, um, but the other... Um, but the, the the other reason why um, why free will is impossible is just the simple causality. You know, just if everything has a cause, then every one of our decisions has a cause, and every one of the causes of that decision has a cause, and naturally have this causal regression going back to before we were born. That's why free will is impossible. And again, oh, the other um, the other definition of of free will that applies very directly to this particular episode is that um, that basically if we have a free will we are morally responsible okay um, and that's in other words like for example if if something happens like you know well if something happens that you had absolutely that that, that, that you you know that you were completely forced to do that, that you know it wasn't up to you you know you had no choice um, but to do it I mean would you um, would you be responsible for that now naturally the, the, the belief in free will says you, you well the belief in free will says that you you basically wouldn't have that circumstance because you would be um, you would be um, you know you, you would be compelled all right I, I'm, I'm losing my train of thought and getting distracted okay so let's get into the the topic. Okay. The um, the most hateful belief that I can think of is the belief in hell. I mean, like, you know, many, many, many people on the planet have this belief that some of us are so evil, so horrible, that some of the things we've done are so horrible that we deserve to live out the rest of eternity after we die Suffering, not just suffering, you know, hellfire, just like extreme suffering. And that is a really, really, really hateful belief. I can't think of anything more hateful. And, um, okay, this is a religious belief. Um, it was probably instituted whenever it was, you know, two, three thousand years ago. Who, who knows? I think the, the Egyptians had... Um, had a conception of, of um, one of the possible afterlives as being hell. And the Egyptian religion preceded the Judeo-Christian religion. So, um, but it, it's, see, like, back then, you have to realize, because I'm not going to blame them again. This, this show is not blame, about not blaming anyone for anything. So, you know, our ancestors, think about it. They didn't have... They didn't have, like, a, a sophisticated, advanced policing system, legal system, criminal justice system, system of education and all. They, they were trying to just, like, get people to do the right thing. You know, people were stealing and lying and doing this stuff. And, I think you know, it's probably quite ingenious considering um, the um, circumstances they were facing. You know, back then, they, somebody must have said, well, I'll tell you what, 
nobody knows what happens after we die if we um, get people to believe that if they do certain things wrong then they're gonna say you know they're gonna suffer a lot you know for, for attorney I don't understand why they had to do it for a pre attorney that, that's so long <laughs> I mean you know two three hundred years would enough like but anyway back then they, they must have thought well this is gonna help this is gonna like if we really scare the hell out of people if we really you know just like um, have them fear doing stuff wrong but you know for spending the rest of eternity and you know in damnation or whatever then that's gonna help people to not do wrong and you know it's it's the standard um, you know model of um, of deterrence you know we we that's you know that's how you know in our legal system now we we kind of like prevent you know ourselves and each other from doing things that are wrong or illegal or whatever we just you know we impose penalties but but again you know suffering you got to realize you know we're here like what 80 years 160 whatever and like to do something so heinous, heinous as to deserve suffering for for the rest of the eternity that that's just like that's like overkill <laughs> it doesn't make sense anyway so so hopefully hopefully as we overcome this um, free will belief delusion um, well that's what the show is we're gonna overcome this uh, all right so all right now here's the thing before I get into more of an explanation of, of you know of you know why we should overcome this um, you gotta appreciate the circular insanity going on um, with the free will belief in hell okay so like people believe in free will okay and that leads them to believe in hell eternal suffering if they have certain beliefs or do certain things now one of the beliefs that uh, we're generally taught actually I'm guessing on this I'm not so very sure I should look into it a bit more but I, I would guess that if you don't believe in free will that'll put you at risk maybe because you know you have these these like tenets um, these principles and you know and, and you, you, you never know so, so the idea is like people are made people are, are taught that they have a free will and then they're taught that because they have a free will they um, they better like believe this and act this way or, or not act that way because of this threat threat of hell but then the circular insanity is that because of this threat of hell many people in the world are just reluctant to give this belief in free will up because it's against you know a religious teaching you know and you know I, I imagine within religions you get some kind of leeway you know you don't have to believe everything but you know if you're really into religion a religion you don't want to take chances you know you say well if, the, if the, this religion teaches that then you know I'd better stay with it so that's you know and, and again it's a circular kind of insanity that the free will belief creates the the belief in hell the belief in hell prevents people from overcoming <laughs> the free will belief okay um, so so what do we do um, we give up the, the belief in free will we understand that um, that reality is causal that you know the state of the universe at the moment before we do anything is what causes us to do whatever we do we understand that that if we have an unconscious and um, and the data for our decision, decisions are there and the processing is there then obviously we can't have a free will if we understand that if we had a free will everybody would be completely blissed out because free will would give you basically license the ability to kinda like choose whatever thoughts you wanted to choose and choose to feel whatever feelings you wanted to feel and naturally yeah if we could do that we would be all perfectly good and perfectly happy um, so okay um, so let's what 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 would happen to the extent that we overcome this this belief in free will um, um, with regards to the afterlife um, I wonder and, and I should do more uh, some research on this I, I, um, I wonder how afraid of, of death people are you know and because I certainly there's a fear of death 
involving the unknown. You know, when we die, we go, you know, maybe we don't go. Maybe we just cease to exist. Who knows? But nobody knows. But to the extent that, um, that we have this fear of hell, you know, based on free, you know, you, you have to realize without the free will delusion, there could be no threat of hell. Nobody could deserve hell, you know, because like, how, you know, they, they, they couldn't, um, you know, we, we couldn't be free to, to choose anything. So like to, without this belief in hell, we would, um, we'd be much less anxious about death. Certainly there's going to be that uh, continuing uncertainty, that, you know, that feeling of apprehension because we simply don't know. And, um, and, you know, with advances in cryogenics, you know, when we freeze people and, you know, I think Walt Disney and some other people are frozen and, you know, ultimately, hopefully bring them back to life. Maybe, maybe like there's kinks in that. I'll get into this a little. Like from what I um, learned a long time ago, basically when you freeze people, the, the trick is to thaw them without the water in their blood vessels and all crystallizing and then um, damaging the, the tissue. So basically, that's what they're working on. Again, if, if they solve that, they bring Walt Disney or somebody back from uh, the dead, then, you know, then maybe that's another way of overcoming this threat of hell, this, you know, and maybe even the free will delusion. delusion. But, but anyway, the idea is, yeah, so, um, so we don't know what happens after death, you know, right now. Um, but to the extent that we um, overcome this belief in free will, we don't have to worry about this, you know, and again, I, you know, I, I used to be a lot more traditionally religious than I am now. I've, you know, this, this whole, it just, because it, not, I mean, it's not just about the free will. You got to, in religions, we're taught that, that God is all good or God is much better than, than we are. And like, you know, as good as I am, I try to be good. I wouldn't condemn my worst enemy to, to one fraction of an eternity in hell. <laughs> and this is like aside from, well, may, maybe it's not. Uh, I was going to say it's aside from the belief in, in, um, in causal will, the understanding we'd have a free will. But I think, I think probably I've, I've understood early on that, wait a minute, you know. I mean, like, it's like we don't decide what to teach ourselves. We don't decide what we're going to consider is right and what we're consider, considering is wrong. You know, this is all taught us. All right. So, okay. Now, getting back to the the um, this idea of hell, um, it's 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 the worst. It's it's the worst belief I can think of. It's the worst free will um, derived belief that I can think of. But certainly, it's not the only free will derived belief that's. Um, that's harmful that that basically um limits the amount of happiness and goodness in the world um any any um every time we attribute causality to, or um free will to someone and blame them um think of the, the names we call people you know i'm not going to say any of them you know think of how we refer to certain people uh, monsters or uh, I mean, like, it, it's like, it invites hatred. I mean, like, well, and even with, well, yeah, the, the, I mean, like, you got to, like, have, I mean, sometimes religions say, well, you know, this, this person's a sinner, and he deserves, he's so evil, he deserves to spend the rest of eternity in hell, but we're going to love him anyhow. That's a tough one. That's a tough one for, for, for you know, any, any of us to, to, to navigate. It's so, so much easier if we simply say, wait a minute, the person doesn't have a free will. Not only should we um, not expect that they're going to go to hell, but we shouldn't really, we shouldn't hate them. You know. Um, okay, we've got about under 12 minutes left. Um, all right, so... Um, why should religions listen to, to this episode, listen to this message? Um, religions are losing people, and, and this, is, this is tragic. I mean, I was, you know, I was raised, um, I was born Jewish, I was raised Christian, you know, started practicing Judaism again as an adult, but, but you know, I understand 
that churches, synagogues, mosques, temples, um, they create a very, very good uh, sense of community for people. It's like in, in our modern world, you know, you have to realize 200 years ago, everybody lived in a village. You know, they're small. There weren't cities anywhere, whatever, 300, whatever. And, and people, um, kind of like people, you know, so the same people every day, people, you know, knew each other and all. Um, but now, now it's all like suburbanized and, and, and urbanized where, where basically, you know, we will walk down any avenue on any given day and probably maybe not see anyone we know. So like what, what the religious institutions have done is that at least, you know, at least once a week you get together, you have this community. And like, I think my parents, when I was growing up, they were like, you know, my mom used to go to her sewing group and, you know, they, they have, you know, it, it's community. But, you know, the problem is religions are losing people. Um, in my mind, that, that, was, that was what... Um, one of the main things, I mean, I mean, actually, you know, I probably, I don't go to service now, I'm Reformed Jewish, and the reason I don't go is like, it's too far away, whatever, and also I'm not a morning person, although they do have the evening services, whatever, Friday, but, um, but the reason, the reason people are losing, um, the re reason religions are losing people is because of the outdated beliefs. And in my experiences was the belief in hell. I could, you know, I can't take a, a religion too seriously that believe that believes that we human beings um, can be so evil as to deserve um, an eternity of, 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 of extreme suffering. That is such a hateful belief, you know. So, so you know, I would I would strongly suggest to to um, the denominations that are losing people to the world that that really isn't you know uh, as much as we could benefiting from religious institutions to 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 look at this you know um, religions really haven't taught anything new in in two thousand years I mean basically um, the teachings of Jesus they were basically reiterations of what the rabbis the Jewish rabbis before Jesus said I mean Jesus really didn't say anything that hadn't been said before him and this is pretty much the same uh, with with all the religions and so so what do you do you introduce something completely new to people and and then you you, you teach them how their lives and the lives of our world can benefit extremely by their understanding and adopting this view and you bring it into the, the liturgy now I don't know how what you know like in religions there is like for example like there was a law in Catholicism uh, until the Pope changed it back in the 60s I think it was like you know if you were Catholic you had to eat fish on Fridays you know you had to otherwise you'd be a bad Catholic so like the Pope or, or I don't know who some some people from Catholicism got together and they said well alright we no longer have to do this so there are vehicles there are mechanisms in religions for changing their mind for just saying well you know that worked for them now we don't have to do that anymore it's certain so anyway so with this free will issue, the human will issue, it, it um, religious institutions can, can do this. They can um, they can change. They can they can make religion saner to people. Because again, this this belief in hell is insane. It, it it's it's so hateful. <laughs> All right, um, and we've got about eight minutes and thirty four seconds, and. All right, I've given this, you know, I think I've, I've said my spiel on this. Um, free will belief encourages the most hateful belief possible, and to the extent we overcome this belief in free will, we can create a less hateful and less fearful world. Remember, if, if you really buy into this religious stuff, that if you do certain stuff wrong, in, in some cases, like for example, I think in Christianity, a lot of denominations, if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Savior, you're going to hell. You know, I mean, that's such fundamental belief. So, like, you know, so um, I have known people in my life who've been religious and who've been afraid of dying because of beliefs like this. And, and I imagine there are countless people like this all over the world. So I think it would be a, a, a huge blessing to everyone to find them. There's a lot of religious beliefs that are great. You know, we shouldn't lie. We shouldn't steal. We shouldn't do so many things. But... But no, this, this threat of eternal damnation is, is horrible. It's not, it's not good. 
and and <laughs> again it, it just doesn't make sense um, okay about seven minutes let's get back to um, let's get back to the free will you know away from the religion for, for the rest of the show a bit um, focus on this um, think about this free will says you can choose to think whatever you want independent of anything that's not in your control all right it's basically saying you can choose to think whatever you want you know because like because they'll also tell you well nothing is is make, is, is, is impeding or, or impinging on your ability to think whatever you want but again let's give it the um the hedonic test the the, the hedonic imperative test um who among us who among us here on earth um if they could wouldn't um be a lot happier i mean most people are happy you know the average level of happiness in the united states is about 70 percent uh, around the world it's a bit lower it's about 60 percent but you know there are people that are happy but you know think about it if we had a free will if our thoughts were completely up to us who among us wouldn't be a lot happier than we are now um and now that we're talking about morality and goodness and and um and religion if we had a free will who among us wouldn't be so much better than we do now like think about like how we treat our our loved ones people in our life that we care about i mean um if we had a free will we would never um do something hurtful toward them we, we would kind of like you know we would never make those kinds of like moral mistakes um we'd never do anything wrong you know because like if we knew that something was wrong okay it's like no then you know i'm not going to get into the like you know what is actually wrong because that's debatable you know depending on what criteria you use you know my definition of wrong is that which creates um displeasure and unhappiness whereas goodness is what creates pleasure and happiness actually it's not my definition that um the goodness part comes from john locke who's a british philosopher but but basically if you know if we had a free will come on it's so simple if we had a free will we'd be completely good you know if we knew something was wrong if we'd been if we if we were taught just even one time that that um something was wrong we could commit it to memory we could uh commit it to willpower and decide never ever to do that wrong we can't do that because we don't have a free will that's the thing okay so i'm done with that <laughs> so we um let's see um i'm going to talk about this show i guess because like you know i did last show i did a commercial for my manhattan show i'll do a brief one now a myth of free will on wednesdays at 11 p.m it's a live show you can call in you can debate you can either either help us explain to the world why free will is an illusion why we'd all be better off overcoming it or if you think we have free will present your case and we will refute it because we are undefeated <laughs> that's like yeah that's uh, it's a good show 11 o'clock again you can catch it if you're not in manhattan you can catch it on the internet just log on to the manhattan neighborhood network um website but i want to do a commercial for this show because like all right this is episode number 49 50th the 50th episode excuse me episode episode i'm gonna like um tape um after this but um this is a cool show i mean like this is revolutionary um and again you know all the episodes are online you know if you if you uh, go to causalconsciousness.com that's the url or an easier way to get to it i guess whatever is um because consciousness is hard to spell sometimes i spell it wrong um just google exploring the illusion of free will okay and that should take you right to the website and so there i you know i have like not only the the 47 shows that are already um 46 whatever that are that are already there 45 i don't know i think we're up to 45 because then i'm you know i'm taping these in advance but there's also um there's also some pretty kind of like concise um explanations of why free will is impossible for example um uh, at the very top of the of the website page there's a uh, a very simple two-step refutation I, I should talk about this now two-step refutation of free will so if you want to do you know you can use this with any any and every free will argument i got to do a show about this complete show um the first step you ask the person who believes in free will um if um to to um 
to cite to come up with a choice now how's this go um, yeah a ask the person who believes um, <laughs> that they have a free will to come up with a choice you know an example of a choice that they believe is freely willed okay so they do that and they could they could say whatever it absolutely doesn't matter what they say because then the, the second question is what what um, it all boils down to then you ask them well was that decision was that thought was that choice caused okay so it's two simple questions you know uh, give an example of a um, I don't know the first one isn't can you can you give an example of of a, a choice that that's, that you consider freely willed was that um, choice caused and think about it once you ask that question you've won you've succeeded because like if if they say that the choice was caused you know because that's probably what they would say because everybody you know I, I, I've tried this test with a lot of people and almost invariably people say that but if they say um, that yes the choice was caused then there's a cause to that cause and a cause to that cause and cause to that cause and naturally the causal regression the, the cause and effect regression makes free will impossible you know you have stuff going on before we were born determining what's happening now so what happens if they say that um, that the choice was not was not caused that's incoherent nothing is uncaused I mean I've done I gotta do a, I've done shows on this in a way but I gotta do more there is no such thing as randomness randomness there's only apparent randomness um, because everything has to have a cause nothing happens it's not caused all right we're running out of time I hope you understand how free will belief encourages the most hateful belief possible this belief in hell which is like truly hateful and insane and just not good and that religions in our whole world and society could become much better as we understand that free will is an illusion and then overcome this hateful belief of hell hope um, you know um, yeah we're gonna explain this in, in other in other ways and 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 also get much more into how you can integrate this into your life and make it work for you and make it work for the world okay um, I'll be back with other shows um, have a great day thanks <laughs>